Russell Brunson, author of this book. But that's not what his main claim to fame is, as much as I love books. His main claim to fame is building click funnels. Three years ago, it was at zero dollars. Now it's done. It's doing a hundred million dollars, and it's got fifty-five thousand clients paying. So for all of you who, by the way, I'm gonna give away cash and this little iPad Mini Four, 128 gigs. So pay attention because we're talking about four secrets that you need to know. Five secrets actually. So let's <laughs> let, before we get too far into the secrets, I just want to ask you something. By the way, let me do my introduction, just so they can cut this in. Welcome to the Ty Lopez Show. All right, that's all we have to do. They'll cut the rest of <laughs> it. Uh, so, Russell, take me back. Three years ago, you decided to launch this company called ClickFunnels, which is, are you now number two, I mean, number one competitor with Shopify? I think so. I don't know anyone else is even close, so I'm pretty sure. And you did this, you have five kids, <laughs> you live in Idaho, for all of you who live in smaller markets and you don't Still think you works. can make any money, um, you probably can. Russell is living proof. So what was the feeling to go from zero and three years later be doing 100 million bucks a year? I, that was never the goal. I mean, the goal is to like try to you know, do whatever, but it's funny because about four years ago when we had the idea and we're like, okay, can we do this? Like a lot of people tried it before. I had tried it before. Yeah. Um, luckily, I had a, a co-founder named Todd Dickerson who was technically able to build it and he spent about a year building it and then it came back and it was just amazing. And so I'm like, all right, let's, let's sell this. And so that's my job to be the guy selling it, talking about it and trying to, to build the, the excitement behind it. And um, it's crazy because it took off and at first it was kind of slow. It took a while to figure out like how to sell and how to get people excited about it. And then when it started working and then Start getting success stories, people having success with it more and start growing and growing and and yeah, the last three years has been has been nuts. Crazy. <laughs> we never it's funny because like as a company grows, I, I'm sure you're the same way. Like, it, at the very beginning you're like you feel like you have problems, but then as you get bigger, you're like, oh we have more money, the problems will go away. But the problems get bigger and they get different right. and they get more exciting and it's just like it's been a it's been a whirlwind the last three years. <laughs> so let's go through this marketing, because a lot of people who listen are listening in. Um, are people who have an idea and they want to grow it and they're not necessarily even imagining they can get to a hundred million bucks I was in Vegas with a friend of mine and he sold his company for um, 5.1 uh, 5 billion cash <laughs> and I was just talking we were having sushi it was like a month or two ago and he goes he had no idea <laughs> I would ever in his cut of it he was owned about eight he cut he walked to 4.1 billion after cash Dang. I mean after taxes not bad right so, for those people watching who can't even imagine, some people are gonna become a lot more successful than they're even imagining. What's the number one? Let's start, try to put these in order. We're gonna give five marketing techniques. And what you told me, we were just eating some food here in, in the kitchen. And you were talking about like, one of your secrets is not just selling a product, but creating a movement. It's, Tell uh, me about that. That's because that's really your number. That's the, I ask you the number one thing you think is responsible for growth, and those of you listening should emulate you. He, you've written this book called Expert Secrets. You got Robert Kiyosaki on the front cover, recommending it, and the Underground Playbook to find your message, build a tribe, and change the world. So, why do people need to build a tribe? How do you do it? So it's kind of funny because when we were launching ClickFunnels. Um, and I look at it in the world that we were, the, the market we were going into, there's a lot of competitors, right? Mm -hmm. And all of them are like, they're brands, but they're kind of nameless, faceless, they're just brands trying to do this thing, right? And I remember about that time I went to um, a network marketing thing, because I had some friends in it, and I was like, I want to see how these guys do their stuff. I show up in this, in this room, and there's like four or 5,000 people in this room, and everyone's going on stage, and they're crying, and I'm, I'm so confused. I'm like, this is a software company. Why, why, <laughs> why people are people crying? crying? And like person after person for two or three days, and I'm so confused. And finally, I look over to one of my buddies, and I'm like, and he, he said to me, he said, you know what they're doing here? And I was like, I had no idea, but everyone's crying. I'm confused. And he said, they, they didn't build a software company. He's like, they created a movement. That's why people are here. That's why they're, they're coming. And this is time so we're watching. So they built the movement before they even branded this concept. Yeah, well, as, they, as they were doing it, and so we were launching ClickFunnels, and I was like, if we're just a software company like everybody else, then we're a commodity, right? And if you're a commodity, then it's like, everyone's fighting for like the lowest price, and eventually you price yourself out, and then it's, it's just like, that's how a lot of businesses happen. And I was like, we need to build something bigger where people are part of this movement, and they're, they're part of our tribe, and they, be, they feel belong, like they belong to this thing. And so, um, about that time, we were, we were launching ClickFunnels, and again, at first, it didn't take off like I thought it was. And um, 
I remember about two or three months into it, I did a presentation uh, about a concept we called funnel hacking, which is like, go you find somebody else has a funnel, you, you look at it and then you model it inside of click funnels. And our people started calling themselves funnel hackers. And I was like, okay, this is like a thing we can, so I was like, hey, we're funnel hackers. We started making t-shirts and everyone that signed up for our software, we make them watch a, a 10 minute video showing how to use click funnels. We mailed them a, a t-shirt that said funnel hacker. And all of a sudden, all these people started wearing funnel hacker t-shirts. I get picked, like I got a message today from a guy in China who was at like the market and he's like, I bumped into a guy with the funnel hacker shirt, took a picture of it, sends it to me. And it happens like all the time because this, this tribe, this culture, this, this thing we've tried to build has been huge. And what's interesting is, you know, right now, uh, you mentioned before, we have 55,000 members. And um, I talked to someone because every single week, almost every week since we launched ClickFunnels, there's been like the next ClickFunnels killer that's coming out. And everyone, right. I get all the emails from everyone forward and they go, oh, next, the competitor's coming out. And so far, I think it's been like 30 something that have come out and all of them have just kind of fallen by the wayside and, and didn't do you much. You think that's because they weren't movements like yours? Yeah, well I asked, I asked some of my members, I'm like, how come you guys don't try their software? Why are you switching over? And they said, because we're part, like this is, like this is not your company, Russell, this is us. Like we're, like, we're, we're funnel hackers, ClickFunnels is our tool, like this is who we are. And they said, that one guy I remember told me, he's like, he's like, I look at it long enough, I look at the ad in my Facebook feed just long enough to laugh and then I scroll on because I huh. know that I'm a funnel hacker and I'm part of this movement. And they don't even, and so it's like, everyone's coming trying to beat us on pricing and things like that. And it's like, no, we built a community, we built a tribe of people who have a belief they're going somewhere, there's a vision of what they're all trying to do. And, and that has been so huge in propelling us to this, this growth. They also share, I mean, we get um, organically about a thousand people a day that are signed for ClickFunnels. And that's not coming and these from are paid pay, ads. These are paid customers, by the way. 55,000 paid customers. And not the free ones like most software. Your free companies. email list is probably, how big <laughs> yeah, do you share over it? Over a million. Over a million. Yeah, and we've probably, probably had about 500,000 or so that have actually created an account, but yeah, 55,000 that are actively paying, paying you. Paying you, and it costs between what? Between 100 and 300 dollars a month. 100 and 300, and then you got some upgrades people can do. Yeah. So, I, it's interesting you're talking about this, because I was just reading this, it's like, I like to read textbooks, even though I didn't go to college, I, I, this is how I do my <laughs> version of college. So I was reading this book on, uh, it's just a psychology, Dr. David Buss's psychology book. He's actually coming here tomorrow. It's one of the most interesting guys in the world. And he's talking about the rise of gang membership around the world. And he said it, it completely tracked the breakdown of the old family unit tribe, right? Gangs started to get big, let's say. I mean, there's always been some form of gang, but people want to belong to something. Mm -hmm. And so now if you can build a business, you see that with like Lady Gaga. She called her fans like the little, wasn't it Little Monsters or something like that? Mm -hmm. And Justin Bieber, what are they called? Beliebers, <laughs> right? And, and that sounds stupid. When I saw that, I'm like, ah, oh, but but maybe they're smarter than we think. And you had this thing, funnel hackers, and it's like, what should what should I use? <laughs> Zach, what do we need to go? Thailand. Thailand. Thai tribe. Thai no, tribe. I don't want my name in because I think it's important. Like you're saying, you you didn't build your yourself yeah. as the brand. Something bigger, in fact, so one of our top successors I talk about in the book a lot, um, it's a fitness there, uh, she's in the weight loss space and her last name, was, or her maiden name was Tool. So she always like was Tool Time Trainer and and she it was tough because people didn't self-identify with that. Right. And so she heard this the first time, she was at an event we did and on the flight home she's like, I need to change this to something that like, that my people will, will associate with. And it was tougher because her business at that point had been her name. And she's like, but that's not, like, that's not big enough for everybody else. And so on the flight home, she's like, she was thinking about ideas and all of a sudden she had this idea. She's like, I'm gonna rebrand it as Lady Boss Weight Loss. And my women are go. gonna be Lady Bosses. They went home, they completely like, deleted their whole business, which was doing well, rebranded it, launched this thing called Lady Bosses. And if you look at her movement right now, they have over 100,000 women who have purchased their programs who are in this thing. And uh, every single week they do these swag drops. They come in and she's like, swag she's drop. like, I got my Lady Boss swag. And she'll come in and she'll reveal it. And they'll have, it'll sell for a short period of time, and I'm not allowed to share their numbers, but they will sell so much clothing in a, like a finite period of time to all the lady bosses. Yeah. Because they have these shirts that say, I'm a lady boss, and they, they have all these quotes that people self-identify with. Yeah. And when they took it from like a brand of like their name to like this thing that's bigger, like people can identify with that. When they're in the gym, they see other lady bosses, and they're like, this is who we are, this is part of, uh, this is our culture. So um, it works in any business, and so it's hard with your name, though, because... Yeah, Ty, Ty makes it sound like... <laughs> <laughs> Thailand, even though I'm not Asian at all, people are like, oh, Thai. So, so tip number one for all of you, you can read his book, Expert Secrets. We'll put a link, tylopez.com slash click funnels, and that will put a link to what Russell's doing. And I just want to reiterate, I've seen this over and over. Even what I do, 
Um, people, you know, I have Knowledge Society as one of the names of one of my companies. And it's not even something I try to brand. And like I see my employees like latching onto that because you can't latch onto like being Ty Lopez. That's just one person. Nobody wants to be really in a cult per se, not normal people. And but being attached to Knowledge Society is like this higher purpose. And if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, there's five levels of needs. Physiological is at the base foundation. And you have number two, you have safety. And then number three, you have love. And number four, you have status and respect. But number five is act self-actualization or actualization to a higher purpose. And that's where people find God and they find, uh, you know, they find like Mahatma Gandhi and his movement to kind of gain independence for his country. Martin Luther King Jr., Abraham Lincoln. And so what you're doing is you're applying those same principles to a brand. Mm -hmm. And you see, took you from zero to a hundred million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And think about the big brands, like the ones that have done a really good job in the last generation have done that. You look at Apple, like people- Biggest company in the world, Apple. People self-identify with that. Oh right? yeah. Like, <clears throat> like there's Apple users and there's everybody else. Like there's that thing, you look at shoes, you look at clothing line, look at like the best brands have done that. For some reason, most businesses, like we don't think about that. Cause like, oh, well I sell this, or I'm a financial planner, I'm, a real, I'm in real estate or whatever. But it's like, those who start looking at the pattern, I'm a big pattern guy, like you see a pattern, it's like, okay, now that I know the pattern, how can I amplify that? So we realize this is the pattern. And the book goes through like, like how to create those movements. But you understand the pattern, and it's like, okay, how can I do this in my business? And when I became aware of it, then it's like, okay, now I know what it is, I can amplify this, and I can, I know these are the pieces of how to make this movement happen, and like, what are all the elements of a good movement, and, and then how to be the leader of that movement, and what are the things, when you understand it, you can amplify yeah. it. And most people never know, they're just, oh, I, I sell this thing, this is my business. It's yeah, like, think no, about politics. Politics are huge Politics. for me. Once people identify with conservative, <clears throat> Republican, or liberal, Democrat, or whatever country you're in, people will hold on to it, even if it becomes apparent in that <laughs> issue, they're idiotic, but people, so it's just on, like in a tribe. That. You know, one thing that Zach, what were you telling me, Zach, was it Larry David from, from Curb Your Enthusiasm would say, when a basketball player, or any sport, football, when they play for one team, you root for them. If they get traded to another team, <laughs> who's your tribe, or not your tribe, I should say, you'll boo them. So Larry David from Curb Enthusiast in Seinfeld said, he feels like we're just rooting for laundry. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you wear the Lakers laundry, I like it. You know, people like Ronaldo when he plays as this team, but if he plays here, and that's kind of, you need to apply that mass psychology to your own business to really grow. People who follow me are people, let's say, who like books and people who believe in self-education and mentors, people who go on click funnels. What, what is, what, so what is, tell us a little more, like what's the, what did you build? Was it just this hack funnel kind of idea <laughs> or funnel hacks or like what's kind of, what do people identify with? Um, you know, I think the majority of our, of our members, they're small entrepreneurs, they're people who, they're still involved in like their business, like the marketing of the business and they're passionate about their ideas. So it's like, how do I get like this thing? Like, and I look at like, I, I was our customers like five or six years ago, right? like I had ideas, I had things I wanted to get out, but I didn't, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to, I'm not a website designer or developer or anything. And so I had to like hire people and it's just so slow and, and, and just frustrating. So for me, it was like when we had ClickFunnels, I was able to like, as a, as a, someone who's passionate about my product or my service, I could just go and put it out there really, really fast. Yeah. You know, I was talking to your partner earlier about MentorBox and he was like, back in the day, he's like, I had a hundred developers here to build all of our software and our things. He's like, yes, I'm gonna work for our company now. Two, and they log yes. into ClickFunnels and they edit stuff. Like that's all we yes. do. So it gives people like us who are passionate about a product or an idea or whatever, it gives us I always tell people because it makes entrepreneurs free to like share their message and not get yeah. bogged down in all the the tech stuff that keeps people from doing it. And so our people are funnel hackers, like that's their thing, is like I don't I don't get stuck down all the tech, I can just go and share my message, I can sell products, I can do whatever it is I want to do and they So they people have, have an idea, it, you're no longer constrained by technology. Yeah. You know that it cost Jeff Bezos back in nineteen ninety four when he launched Amazon to build a website, the going rate with programmers, technology, blah was one hundred thousand dollars to get a website up. Now you're saying with ClickFunnels or Shopify or any of these, we're not, this is by the way, not a paid advertisement for ClickFunnels. <laughs> Although I, I'm gonna become an affiliate for them. So if you click the link, 
your computer will explode and I'll get all your money from your bank account. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah, we have a lot of people. The world is now hyper cynical. So that's why I just tell people, if you click this link, all the money will come out of your bank account and go in mine. So please go to tylopez.com slash click funnels right now. Right now. This is the ultimate scam. Okay, no, I'm just joking. But anyway, gone. but somebody can go to Shopify or click funnels now and instead of spending a hundred G's, which makes it basically not only Impossible, but you can't test new ideas. With yeah. ClickFunnels, let's let's move to number two. So then number two, I want to throw this at you and get your opinion because number two for me would be the ability to test new concepts. I have such a good story on this. Let's hear. I'm so excited. Okay, so one of our members is actually right now the person who's processed the most money inside of ClickFunnels. I know you guys are gaming or work not gaming, working to beat. Yeah, we're gonna beat him. You know what I mean? But the guy right Mentor. now who's got the record, his name's Trey Llewellyn, and what Trey did. Is he came to ClickFunnels and I, I met him right afterwards and he's like, he was selling t-shirts at the time through, um, I can't remember, t-shirt sites. And he's like, I'm going to use ClickFunnels. I don't know what my thing is, but I'm going to launch a funnel every single week till one of them works. Hmm. And uh, he's like, okay, so his first funnel he put out there, he launches it and it was just like, ah. next one put out there and launched it. And like, t-shirts. Uh, initially it was t-shirts and those yeah. were kind of okay. And he tried a couple other things and um, some started having some marginal success. And one thing he tried to sell in his past were these flashlights. He had literally a huge closet full of flashlights. And one week they're like, what should we build this week? He's like, let's build a flashlight funnel. And so they got the flashlights, I took pictures of them and, and his buddy, they were joking and like, we should call these survival flashlights because this is like the cool new thing. So they put like survival flashlight and they launched the survival flashlight. It was like funnel like eight or nine in this, in this thing, right? Launches that flashlight funnel and in like a two month period of time, there's $20 million selling these survival flashlights. Two months? I had no idea. It's the biggest funnel we've ever, I've wow. ever seen in my entire life. Like blew up. Um, and just went went crazy. So it's like, but he couldn't, and the, like for me, before we had ClickFunnels, it took us on average about three months. I had eight full-time developers and designers. It takes three months to get one funnel live, right? Yeah. And so, and we would do, so we do about one every single quarter, so four a year, and usually one out of four would work. So three out of four would completely fail. So like one a year, we're hoping for a home run, they'll pay for the rest of the year. With Trey, like he was doing one a week. Like now, in, in our team, we always, we spend a lot of time thinking about the idea, and then we actually sit down to build it. We usually get done within an hour to an hour and a half, the whole entire thing. So you so can go like from idea so fast. So people are watching because I feel people, like people get stuck still. People are still in the old old modality of business, which is think the thing through, write an elaborate business plan, <laughs> raise capital, hire a, you know a team. Da -de -de -da -da -da. By the Pretty time works. yeah, one year later, go broke. Have a great story about how you went broke and do this. And by the time you're 96 years old, you're wealthy. Yeah. And what you're saying is well, you've condensed the cycle. Just test the market. You can have a business up running, fail or succeed within 24 hours. The same way. So the way this Trey guy, the way he did his test, he, <laughs> I can, I, this is a real thing. He would walk across the street to Walmart. He'd walk around the aisles. He's like, this looks like it would sell. He'd take it off the shelf, go back home, take a picture, make a funnel. And it didn't work. So he'd walk away. The ones that did work. Then he would go and like find some in China, source, like whatever, all of the things to get the actual product. But he wasn't spending all sorts of time and money ahead of time. Yeah. He was just like going to Walmart, finding what looked cool, try to sell it. If it's sold, if the market's like, yes, I want to give you money for that, then he's like, okay, I'm gonna actually build something behind that. If it didn't, he's out the 30 bucks that he think he bought at Walmart huh. in you know, an hour of his time. So it's like you can get speed so much faster going through this process. You know, I've thought that one of the best sayings that I've ever kind of put together as a rule of life for myself is, he or she who experiments the most wins. Hmm. That's cool. Like people think about many things that'll determine your success. I, in my experience, I've never sold flashlights. Maybe <laughs> I miss I missed that trend. <laughs> but to the extent that I experiment, I make a lot more. I, I'll put it to you this way: it's a hundred times more income if you hit on the right product. Mm -hmm. Like, you, let's say you'll make. One million dollars lifetime with a product. If you hit on the right one, you'll make a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. So the reward is huge for using tools that allow. Whether it's not just click funnels, you also have the ability to use Facebook ads, Google ads, display ads, Instagram ads, Twitter ads to quickly validate that you can drive cold traffic to a funnel too. Mm -hmm. New people. That's another. You need you need some traffic too. So let's talk, let's talk about number three. I'm throwing these out. You can add to these, but um, <laughs> what is the marketing technique hack besides we talked about creating movement, which gets virality, meaning people tell their friends and then your business grows, just word of mouth. But have you done any paid advertising and what have you learned about that? Yes. Um, we do a lot of paid advertising. 
It was interesting. I like how you, I you're a mad scientist. It's so many fun stories. I love this. Um, <laughs> it's kind of late at night too, so maybe I'm just tired. I don't know, but I'm excited. He's delirious because he's in <laughs> Idaho time. Yeah. This is like <laughs> three in the morning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I'm gonna tell a story that kind of sets this up though. But um, so when ClickFunnels launched, it started growing really fast, and it's been fun as we've had a whole bunch of uh, VCs that have come and try to give us money. And we haven't taken a penny on, we don't want to, but it's always fun to like let them come talk to you and tell you what they think you're worth because it makes you feel good about yourself, right? <laughs> so you guys come and talk to us. And so we're at lunch one day and uh, one of the VC guys is uh, asking all his questions in our numbers and trying to put them out there. And uh, he asks the question, the same question they ask every single time on Shark Tank, right? Cuban's always like, so what's the cost to acquire a customer, right? Every single time on Shark Tank. And so he asked me, he's like, well, what's your cost to acquire a customer? And I was like, well, Right now, we spend about $120 on Facebook ads to get a free trial. And yep. he was like, oh, he's getting all excited, like doing the math. Like, so we write a check, $50 million, you get this many customers. I was like, actually, no, but we turned all the ads off. Uh, and he's like, why'd you turn the ads off? And I was like, well, because I'm paying this out of my own pocket. Like, this is me bankrolling this. Like, like we're homegrown. Like, and he's like, well, how are you guys growing so fast? I don't understand. And I said, well, this whole funnel thing that we're doing, we're, like, we practice what we preach. And he's like, well, Walk me through the process. So I walk him through, like, for example, my book. Right, this is this is the funnel, like, that gets people into my world. Right, so we sell selling the book. the book. Yeah. So on average, right now, it costs me about twelve dollars on Facebook ads to sell one copy of the book. Then someone buys the book, we have an upsell for the audio book, and then there's a training program behind. Do you do it. the book free? Uh, it's free. They just cover shipping and handling. Okay. And then you have a couple upgrades. Yep. And so on average, we spend twelve dollars to sell a book, but I make thirty-two dollars in the funnel. Hmm. So everyone that buys the book, I net twenty dollars that goes in my pocket, and I get a customer, and I tell a customer, "Hey, there's a really cool thing, thing called ClickFunnels," and then hmm. they go to ClickFunnels. So I explained to the VC guy, and he's like, "That doesn't make any sense." I said, "Yeah, I get paid twenty dollars net to introduce someone to my company," hmm. and he and I had explained it three or four times, and I remember the, the the fourth time afterwards, he said, "If that's true, like that'll change business forever." Right. I said, that's exactly what my whole message is. Like these funnels make it so that people like me who don't have any money, I don't have to go, you know, get some venture capitalist guy to give me ten million dollars, hundred million dollars to bankroll and finance the growth. Like I can create a funnel providing value to people, it gives me customers, and then I introduce them to my to the thing I'm really selling yeah. and it's all free. And that's how that's and then how you we told them grow. and get out. Yeah. <laughs> and then get out. I don't need your <laughs> dirty money, you <laughs> VC <laughs> capitalist pig. Did you say that? It was a little nicer, but you know. Okay. Just make up an Next acronym that they you. don't know. VCP. <laughs> Yo, we have no VCPs. Go, what is that? Um, very Next calm that, I'm going to be like, I have a friend I need to talk to you, and I'll hand the phone to you. There you, you go. Tell them that. That'd be awesome. Like, Are you bothering my friend? <laughs> I will send the Illuminati <laughs> to your house. <laughs> it will take you down. So basically, if you can build a funnel mm -hmm. that gets people for cheap to buy even an intro. So one of the lessons is create an introductory 100%. product. Instead of trying to go, it's kind of like you meet a girl, let's say you want to get married. I was just watching The Office. Andy Bernard <laughs> is a dude who's always trying to get married. And he got he has no game because he basically goes straight for marriage within same with Michael Scott. So what you're saying is go on a date, get your customer to go on a date with you. Make a low so what are some low level products or not low level, low price products that can introduce people to your, to, you can do marketing to your low level, low price product, and then later, once they trust you, cross promote them over to your main product. Yeah. So book, what else books have you good. seen do well? Books are the hardest though, because writing books is tough, right? So yes. a lot of people are like, I can't write a book, so that's tough. An easier one, uh, one of my favorite ones I've done for us is, um, I have a podcast as well, and I just, took like my favorite episodes from the podcast and I put them on a USB drive mm. and I added a couple of other audios and I did free plus shipping like this USB drive. It's got all my best uh, podcast episodes plus these two, three other things you can't get anywhere else. Mm. And uh, that so do that, as well as that? Uh, it did, yeah. In fact, the best one we've ever done, this is ridiculous. So we have, um, there's just one sales script. I do a, a web, the way I do my webinars is a script behind it. It's like one piece of paper script okay. and there's a CD that explains the script. And that one took me an hour to record the CD, and I printed a piece of paper. That's the best one we've ever Wait, had. Wait, so let me the, ever. walk with you. Right. Piece of paper. <laughs> what? Is, it's a filming you holding a piece of paper? What they buy, they're buying is a piece of paper with a CD that explains the paper. And that outconverted all my books. What does the piece of paper say? One word? It's the, the sales script for how, it's, how I structure my webinars. Oh, and it's like kind of a drawing. Step one, step two, step three. It's, it's, a, drawing. Drawing. it's a doodle drawing. Just like I, I doodle all my stuff in the book. So I, it's a doodle drawing, the CD explains it. That one out converted any book, anything I've done, it took me an hour to make the whole thing. So you don't have to go and like, it's not like I gotta write a book, because this, like, this, this took me 10 years to write a book, it's really hard. Not long, it can just be, 10 years. Can, if you <laughs> wanna get a business up every 10 years, <laughs> follow Russell Brunson's exact <laughs> book technique, or 
Just write on it, scribble something on a piece of paper, and charge people three dollars. I did another one that was pretty cool. Okay. It's kind of stealth though. But this is if you guys are really stealth. lazy and you just want Everybody, to be this way. Everybody, close your ears. I want to hear this and don't want you to hear it. Okay. okay. So I just went to YouTube, and you can use any market. Let's say you want to be in the survival market, right? Oh. Go to YouTube and find like the 10 coolest survival videos, and then um, sell like access to a membership site that has like the top 10 highest, coolest survival videos on YouTube. You can go look for them if you want. There's billions of videos. Good luck. Or oh, give me a dollar. I, I will you. give you a membership site that has embedded the top 10 survival ones in the world. Because that's you're basically Boom, curating. That. Yes. Because one thing that sucks about YouTube, there's too many damn videos. <laughs> They're out of order. Any subject I look up, I'm like pissed. I was trying to look so up the pissed. founder of Red Bull. I wanted to hear his story. Mateschitz is his name. This Austrian guy. Because I'm building an energy brand. Oh, cool. we got, that's one of the things that we're probably using click funnels right now. Buzz bears, it's called little gummy bears that give you their all natural pro, uh, energy. Huh. So I go, I'm like, I'm gonna just listen in a little bit of Red Bull history. I go there first video. Okay, this looks. I click. It's in German. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is super. And my browser's not set to German. The second one, it was somebody, I kid you not, had uploaded, you know how you can get a computer to read a script? Mm -hmm. It was a slideshow with the computer voice going, <laughs> Robert Manish, or whatever his name, Manish was born in Austria. I'm serious, it was one hour, I'm like, so, so that's cool, you, those of you listening could just get a comp compilation that you find of good content. Put it on your own website. There's nothing against the law of doing that. Yeah, they want you to. There's an embed link on YouTube. Yes, <laughs> they want you to. And they don't care if you charge. But basically, you figure like who like I'm a big believer. In, like who are your dream customers? Like who do you actually want to sell stuff like to in the this. future? Can I use this idea? Yeah. It's okay, all yours now. <laughs> Done. Here, bye. But I got all I needed from <laughs> this talk. We're, <laughs> we're shut down. We don't need you anymore. But think about you figure out like who's your dream customer and like what videos they actually want, and that way you get when you're going to Facebook or YouTube and you're buying ads. You get your dream customers to raise their hand like, oh, I want survival videos. And if you just happen to sell a survival course or product, now your dream customers are coming to you and they can introduce them to all your whole product line like that. It's yeah. so, so simple. Yeah, some people call that tripwires. You know, some people call them, it, 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 they're almost free samples. Walton, Sam Walton was doing this with Walmart before almost anybody. He was doing these kind of free trial thingies. Now you go to the store, you've never eaten their kind of corn dog, frozen food. They give you a little free one and then you go, this is good and you're 10 times more likely to buy. So you give them a teeny sample, you charge a small amount of money. Is that to keep their credit card on file so you can one click it's, like Amazon does? Two reasons. One big one is one click upsells. It makes one click upsells really easy and click funnels. And then number two is um, I want people that, are, that buy stuff. Yes. Right? Like I'm a big believer in like, uh, I've noticed this in my entire business is like people who buy stuff buy stuff. Yes. Right? And so like if someone's not willing to, to pay like five bucks to cover shipping and handling on a book, they're never gonna give me a hundred bucks a month of software. Yeah. And so I wanna identify of all the people coming on the site, like who are the people that are actually buyers who are actually legitimately gonna play this game. Yeah. If they play at the credit card now it's like, okay, I will I will spend more time and energy marketing this person, I'll get a better relationship because they they're proving themselves as buyers. They call that winnowing the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. That's an old school if you know what that is, bonus points for you. <laughs> well basically old school when they make bread, you take the wheat. And you gotta separate out the chaff is the junk. Mm -hmm. It's the part you can't eat. And you know, the wheat's the part you make the bread out of. So what you're basically saying is you have to have a filtration system with your customers and putting a payment wall, they call that fancy term for a credit card page, differentiates. Now you're just getting people pouring into your site that are willing to pay. Yeah. And then they get this in the mail and they for me, for my business, they read it and all of a sudden like they build a relationship with me, they understand like the movement we're trying to build, they understand like, oh, this is why I need a fund. And, like, just so many good things like to uh, educate and doctrinate people up front. And then when you have- So it's 268, well, 259 pages. It took you only 10 years. <laughs> so you wrote 26 pages a year. It's a lot so for some people already. 26, you were writing about two pages a month. <laughs> I took a couple years out in the middle off, so. Okay, it's not bad. Hey, I'll tell you this. One book every 10 years is better than zero books every 10 years. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you're making money without even having a book for people if you might feel into it. More people can write a book than you think. I'm actually working on a book. You know, for all these books I promote, I should have written a book, but I hope to have one done by the end of this year on the 12 foundations. 12 foundations. What I wish they had taught us in school. That's awesome. By the end of this year? By the end of this year. 
one of the 12 foundations. I wish they had shown me this video with Russell Brunson. <laughs> All I need is a time That'd machine to go forward ever. in time from being 12 years old, watch this video, shoot back in time. Does anybody have, what's, what was the name of that car? A DeLorean in yeah. Back to the Future. <laughs> 88 miles an hour is all you need. All right, number four, we gave three. What is the fourth marketing secret? Let, let me Snapchat this, let's snap it, Sam. Because, let's take a few questions. Can you read a few questions real quick? Live, what do, see, what do we got? I've been seeing them pour in. We got a crap load of people watching this, especially on Facebook. That's exciting. Especially at middle of the night. I'm impressed you guys are still up. We probably got people now in Europe watching this early. Okay. Let's see, I'm trying to find some good ones. A book that I already bought. This is an ongoing conversation I just came into. What are ClickFunnels? ClickFunnels is the name of the company. It's a quick, uh, it's a software that quickly allows you to build a website and start selling stuff. Was that good? It was really good. Product spokesman. They use that. As I need to start line. getting paid for this. <laughs> this is a simple one. It's how to start marketing uh, for a beginner. Yeah. So what does a beginner need to know to get? Let's do number four. So this is what we're going to do. Number four is going to be beginner, the most beginner technique, and number five is going to be the most advanced. So if you're watching this and you're a beginner, I'm about, Russell's about to give you some bread. And right. it's number five, and if you are advanced, just hold on, you're going to get something you hardly will understand. I want you to just throw out <laughs> the most complex hypotenuse of marketing <laughs> divided by the E equals EMC squared of, of click funnels. Oh yeah, yeah, let's snap this. Okay. And I gotta do it in 10 seconds? No, 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 just talk. <laughs> Let me do that. Go back a little bit so people see that. For all of you listening, you're missing out. Put the flash on. All right, three, two. All right, I'm here with Russell Brunson. You're missing this live call. I'll put the replay up. We're on five techniques you use to go from zero to $100 million business in three years. What you've been doing the last three years, Russell gonna lay it down. Number four, we're, we're on the, the advanced, super simple tip and super advanced tip with click funnels or any type of marketing. What would you say is the most, for the biggest beginner, I mean they are a neophyte, they got one dollar in their bank account, they never built a website. <laughs> How do they get started? They start? You got this book that teaches it. What, what do you, sell flashlights? All right, nah. He had a customer sell 20 million in flashlights in two months. Insane, it's really cool. Um, I think the, big, the best way, and what's fun is you guys are all watching this process, right? Um, you practice this every single day, I practice every single day. The biggest thing is get your phone out and start documenting your process of whatever it is you want to do, right? Like every single day, um, uh, in this book I talk, there's a quote from Garrett White, I was speaking to his event today, and uh, in the book he talked, or uh, he talked about um, most people are scared because when they get started, they're like, oh, I'm gonna start this thing and I'm not gonna be good at it, I'm gonna suck, and the reality is like, when you first start this, you're gonna suck, right? But um, the whole key is like, if you keep doing it, you'll suck less and less, and eventually you'll actually become good. And so my guess, if we went back to the Snapchats of yours, five mm -hmm. years, four, when did you start this whole game? Like, Yeah, I mean, I've dabbled in 2012, 13. You were pretty good though for the very 2015. Beginning. Your first video in the garage was amazing, so. <laughs> that wasn't my first one though. <laughs> okay, so that, that's oh, great to know for everybody. How's didn't do as well. Feel? How many did you have to do before like one hit? I mean, I really started in 2013 and the big hit was in 2015. Okay, two years. This yeah. is amazing. So this is important because you guys are like, oh, this is Ty Lopez, like the big mansion, everything's happening. He's got a million people are listening, but like it didn't start initially, right? Yeah. So one of the guys in here that, uh, that we worked really close with, um, his name's Anthony V. Clemente. He's got a, a site uh, called the Biohackers Guide, uh, biohackersguide.com. He wrote this book and he wanted to get a message out. He's trying to buy ads and all stuff, nothing's working. He's like, what should I do? I said, get your phone out and every single day I want you to make one video showing like some weird biohack and at the end of it, tell people to go buy your book. And he was like, okay. So he, he's like, what should I do? I'm like, just do it on any weird thing you want. So he starts like um, picking a biohack every single day. So one day it was like, he put on these lasers in his nose and his ears and he like talked about the biohack and he's like, go buy the Sharks book. with lasers on their heads. <laughs> Laser beams. <laughs> And he did it, and then like nobody watched the video. And I posted on his, his fan page, had like two people, like his mom and me were it. And like nobody listened to it, and he's like, this doesn't work. I'm like, it doesn't matter, you're learning your voice, do it again. So the next day he did another one, and he did another one. And he did it like every day for probably 11 or 12 days. And then like that day, like 11th to 12th day, he was kind of bored, and he's like, I'm gonna make a video called How to Biohack Your Vegetables. And I remember watching it go live, and I'm like, dude, you wasted a day, there's no lasers, there's no weird things, there's no like, Freezing tanks, like your biohack, it was like put butter in your vegetables, and that's how you biohack it. So he does this little video, 
and we put like ten dollars in ads behind it, and for some reason that one hit. Yeah. Then a week has one point five million views, sells wow. like twenty. Uh, excuse me, sells like two thousand copies of his book, and he's off to the races. Wow. And after he kept making more videos and more videos, and he didn't know what like we didn't know that was the message that the market wanted. We had no idea. We just he kept doing it, kept doing it until like it worked. And so if you guys are just getting started, I'd like get your phone out every single day, do a Facebook Live, whatever your thing is you're gonna do. Pick a product you want to sell. It can be yours. It can be ties. It can be mine. It can be. You don't have to have your own product nowadays. There's so many things you, you can affiliate. be passionate about. Yep. Find some of your pa be, become an affiliate mentor box and be like, this is the great. Like, every time you get your box, do a video talking about it, showing what's inside of it, and why you're so excited, and just keep doing that consistently. And then put like five or ten dollars in ads behind it. And most of the time, your messages aren't going to hit. But every once in a while, if you do it right, something will, the message will hit with your audience, and all of a sudden, like you become an overnight success. Yeah. And that's that's the key. Like I said, you were two years, and all of a sudden, this that yeah. that was the first video that just blew up. Yep. and went crazy. Just you know, you get bet. I tell people, people forget. There's very few things in this world that you do more than once that you get worse at. So you just gotta start. <laughs> if, I remember the first time I played basketball. I moved to North Carolina. Never picked up a basketball. I was 13, and we moved. My house was basically next, well, was next to the projects. So I had to go to school. I had to go to the middle of projects. And in the middle of projects in North Carolina, there's a basketball court. So I sat there, and before the bus would come, all, everybody would just start shooting basketball. So I remember taking the basketball and being like, what is this? I grew up playing soccer. So <clears throat> I throw the ball. You ever seen um, Along Came Polly with Ben Stiller? Yes. And, uh, ben Stiller. Jerry Branson? No, what's the... Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman. I was like Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> I'm like, Air, like, the ball's <laughs> bouncing off. But you get better with progress, meaning you put one foot in front, you shoot one time, you build one website. People are always like, Ty, how can I be sure my first business is my best business? I'm like, what's wrong with you? Why would you want your first business to be your best one? Mm -hmm. That means you have the inability to learn and get better. That means you're basically some Benjamin Button ding, you know, idiot <laughs> that you get stupider. You don't get stupider, you get more experience. Let's jump to the most advanced this technique, advanced. number five. All right, okay, so this one, um, you asked me when we were in dinner over here, you said, how big is your sales team? So my sales team is one person that we use to build our team, and it's me, I'm the only salesperson. So I didn't build a whole sales team with thousands of salespeople like a lot of big software companies do. So I had to figure out, how do I sell to the masses where it's just me speaking to a whole bunch of people, closing a 100 or 1,000 or 5,000 people at a time, because I don't, want to build a whole sales team. I did that in a business in the past. It was horrible. And so I had to figure out, how do you sell to masses? And I didn't know how to do that for a long time. I had to learn. I went to seminars. I spoke on stages. And I got, did a really bad job of it and kept like learning how to, like, how to speak and actually sell in a big audience. And, um, and uh, that's how we built ClickFunnels with webinars that are selling to masses. So we get anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 people registered for a webinar. I come on. I do a 90-minute presentation. At the end of it, people sign up like crazy. It's live. Uh, the yep. live webinars. Yep. And so in that, it's like, how, so how do you do that? Like selling one on one is different, right? Because I'm selling one on one, I have a chance to talk to you, and you have a concern, I respond, we go back and forth. And so there's a lot of good salespeople to sell one on one, but to sell in masses, I have to be able to hit like all the big problems at once and, um, and be able to try to resolve everyone's concern without actually resolving anyone's concerns individually. And so it's a big part of this whole book I teach, but the, this is the advanced strategy I want you to understand is that um, to be able to sell to the masses, to be able to convert 10 or 100 or 1,000 people all at once, you have to become very, very good at understanding what people's false beliefs are, okay? So people have these false beliefs that keep them from buying. There's a reason why people aren't gonna pick up the book and read. There's some false belief like, I'm not an expert. I don't believe, they're, so they all have something, right? There's a reason why people aren't signed for MentorBox. They're not going to an event or whatever that thing is. They have these false beliefs that hold them back, right? And so our job as marketers is we have to figure out like what's the false belief that they have and typically what happens is that most of us have that same false belief at some time in our life. Mm -hmm. So we have, to, we have to remember like what was, like what was this, like what happened in my life? Why do I not believe that anymore? There's a reason why I, I don't do that anymore. Like what's the reason? What's the story behind it? And we have to go back in time and remember, okay, I don't believe that anymore because of this thing. And then when I'm speaking in masses, I tell stories in a way to help break people's false beliefs. Okay, so for example, probably the easiest one to, to map this out, and I'm not into network marketing, but it's a really good example of this, right? So let's say I want to sign up, let's say I'm in a room and I got 50 people and I want them to sign up for a network marketing program. So I'm thinking like, what is the false belief most of these people probably have? Like the false belief is that if I join this company, all my friends and my family are gonna leave me, right? That's a belief that a lot of people have, okay? <laughs> and so I think like, well, why do they have that belief? Why do they believe that if, that if, 
that they join the company, they're, they're going to lose their friends and family. And I'm like, okay, well, it's probably because one time in the past, one of two things happened. Number one is that they got into a company, they got outside, they started calling their friends and their family, and they had a horrible experience, all right. the people hated them. Or number two is they were on the receiving end of that, and they got a call from their brother pitching them and wouldn't leave them alone. And so because of that, they're like, I, if I get involved in this company, I'm going to have these people that just hate me, right? Yeah. So that's their false belief. So if I'm going to convince somebody, like, I, no matter how good the product or the services, I cannot, I'm never going to close that person in a million years. And most people have that false belief, right? So I got to think, okay, like, what's, what's the story that happened? What's the experience I had? Why don't I not believe that? And um, I was talking to some of this big network marketing, one of the guys in our community, and um, he told me the whole story. Because I asked him, I'm like, I'm like so that's your, like, that's your audience's false belief. Why don't you believe that? He's like, well, I did believe that for a long time. I was like, he had the same false belief. So tell me why that's no longer true. He said, well, um, I joined a program. I had a really bad experience and lost my friends and all, all the people would stop returning my calls. So I left. And a little while later, I had a friend and he told me that you could generate leads online of people that actually were interested. He's like, right. I put up ads and they raised their hand and then they would fill out a form. Then I would call them and he's like, everyone I called was excited to hear from me because they just asked me to call them and then they sign up. He's like, I didn't talk to a single friend or family member ever. Huh. And so I was like, okay, that's your story. Tell that story to this audience and this false belief that they're holding on to with all their might. All of a sudden, your story will, will shatter that false belief and they'll buy. Yeah. And so for me, like when we started ClickFunnels and I was trying to figure out how do I sell to the masses, I had to figure out like what are the false beliefs in my audience. And I figured out those false beliefs and then we put them in a what presentation. What was the main false belief? Um, there's always three false beliefs that people have. The first one is false belief about the thing that you're trying to get them into. So for me, it's funnel. So like, yeah. they're like, oh, well, I could use Shopify, or I could be on Amazon, or I can, what they, that's their false belief that they could do it a better way or some other way. Yeah. So I break that false belief. The second false belief people always have is their internal ability to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's cool, but like, I don't know if I can, I'm not techie, and I can't do that. So I break the internal belief. And then there's always a, a, the third belief is an external belief, which in my business is like, well, so yeah, my first one, I convince them they need a funnel. Number two is like, I convince them they can do it because it's really simple. I show them click funnels like, oh, I'm an idiot, I can do it. And the third one, they always freak out. It's like, well, if I have a funnel, I don't know how to get people to show up. Yes. So I show them traffic, like, oh, here's how you get traffic. And they're like, oh my gosh. Now all their false beliefs are gone, and they have to give me money. They have to sign up. Yeah. And that's like the big secret to mass selling. And that's what the whole concept of this book is that. Like, how do I sell to the masses? Like, how do you do it? And it's understanding your audience's false beliefs about the thing you're trying to sell them, their internal ability to do the thing you're trying to sell them, and then the external fear they have that it could be like, that they can blame on, like, I can't do it because my wife won't let me, or because I don't have traffic, or whatever that external thing and is. And you think that's the same in anything you Everything I've done. So out of our 55,000 members, I would say, man, probably 15,000 or so um, are selling in the masses this way, through webinars, through Facebook yep. Lives, and they do is they figure out the false belief about the, the thing they're selling, internal or external, you wrap that and- What's the boom. third one? How do you generalize that one? The third the one external. for you guys was, you know, that people couldn't get traffic. Um, so what would that be for somebody who's not selling something online? Let's say, a, I don't know, personal fitness. Okay, somebody fitness. doing so, fitness training. So let's talk about Lady Boss. Lady Boss is some of our best success stories. They, uh, they don't do webinars, they do Facebook Lives. Um, and I'm like, I wish I could share their numbers. They are doing insane numbers. Making Facebook Live. $100 a year? Yeah, a little okay. bit. Good, um, success story number one. So, they're, so they're, like, their external is like, okay, it's like, I gotta convince you that you need to follow our weight loss plan, right? Yep. And it's like, I don't know if I can do it because like in the past I failed and I've tried things. It's like, okay, now we have to shatter that one. Like, How would they shatter that? What's um, an example? Showing them like. It's trying to get people to lose weight. Number one, you gotta convince them. This is a little bit, um, I had Wolf of Wall Street here, okay. Jordan Belfort. Mm -hmm. And he kind of has a similar framework of, you gotta number one, convince them that you are to be trusted as a human. Mm -hmm. Number two, he said you have to convince them that the, pr the company that you work for is to be trusted. And the third thing, you have to convince them that your product's to be trusted. That's kind of like what you're saying. Yeah. Number one, you had to convince them that ClickFunnels has things that Amazon and Shopify don't, don't have. Number two, you had to convince them that they could trust you, that, that it would be simple, almost they had to trust themselves. Yeah. And then the third one was the external one. Yeah, they, that they had to learn to trust you that they could get customers. Yeah. So the weight loss one, the external could be like, well, I know I can do this diet plan, but my wife, she always buys all this junk food and the kids have can. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it because of that, right? Yeah. Like, who are they going to pawn off this excuse on? Like, that's the, that's the, the external for something like that. But everyone's got so that. So how, how, how do you break that one? Um, so again, them, leave your wife. 
Yeah, leave it. No, it's like get your get your family involved. Like make this part of the whole thing. Like the family yes. diets together. Like they have success and anyway. But you know, for Kaylin who runs Lady Boss, like it's her story. It's like what was so I come back to her and it's like, why do you believe this is the right product? Yeah. There's a reason why you started this company. Like tell that story. And then it's like you've tried other things before you came into this. Like tell the story about other stuff you tried and why this worked. Boom, knocks down that false belief. And it's like, now you didn't lose weight the very first time you tried it. What were your fears? Like what kept you from doing it personally? And how did you break that? Tell that story. To tell that story and also the next one falls down. And it's like, now what are the external things you blamed it on? Like, I can't do it because of why. Tell that story why you don't believe that anymore. And those things fall down, they have to follow you. Yeah. If they don't, then they're lying to themselves. Yeah. And it's so the advanced right. technique is really, in some ways, you gotta be a master of psychology. It's it's not really marketing. Mar stories. marketing is you could take the M from marketing and it's mass psychology. Mm -hmm. You know, the M stands for the mass. And the marketing is just a superfluous words. It's really mass psychology. And one of the things you're saying is people follow stuff when they trust it. Mm -hmm. And you look at mass movements, you were talking earlier about things like cults and things like that. Yeah, you know, I was reading about World War II Germany at some level. Adolf Hitler convinced Germany that number one, Germany was the best country in the world. They have song, you know, it was like, they call it the, uh, is it Rumspringer or something like, not Rumspringer, uh, I'll remember the name, but basically that they needed room to grow because they were the chosen people of the world. Laban, look it up, it's room something. Anyway, number two, he had to convince them that he, as this dictator guy, was the man to lead them because he had been a man of the people in World War I. He was a decorated soldier who had been wounded and had their version of the Purple Heart and all that. And then the third thing, he had to overcome the belief that, you know, can we really conquer the world? And the point is, Adolf Hitler was crazy. But using mass psychology, he got them probably at the time Germany was the most quote unquote intellectually advanced country, had the most, you know, had Goethe and had Wagner and had great intellectual Sigmund Freud and Einstein, all these people were like German, Austrian. But yet they succumbed to the mass psychology and were like, you know, in Kukuluku land following him. So you don't want to start a weird <laughs> Nazi cult, but you look at. Humans are humans, and the Germans in, you know, my grandma was born in Germany in 1918, and she watched Germans just, she was like, what's going on? Normal Germans are like, we're gonna follow. She actually, uh, her friend Maleta Meshman invited her to meet Adolf Hitler in this little house talk he was giving before he was in power. Really? And my grandma said she thought he was crazy right away, but a lot of people convinced them. What was it? Horse whistle leaf? No. Pin. <laughs> No, just say Hitler, <laughs> Germany wanted room. What is the so word, son? So Where's there. all my Germans here? I know you guys are awake. It's like <laughs> blah, blah, room. I think it's, or, ah, man. Now I'm stuck on a stupid point. Yeah. <laughs> Lieben's room. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you, Lieben's Ethan. room. <laughs> Believe it or not, I, I actually kind of know German, but <laughs> not so well. As you can tell, my German's <laughs> rusty. rusty. So, for let, let, let's just give a couple bonus things, and I, and I saw some questions going. I want to answer. I want to get your opinion on some of these questions. Let me see if I can pull up the one that I saw. Yeah, the word is Libra room. There we go. <laughs> Russell is my hero. That's the only German yeah. I know. What do you think? All right, great question here from Tom on YouTube. What's the biggest trend for 2017, 2018 that you think people need to catch? Selling flashlights. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, just kidding. Um, you know what's interesting is uh, we just did recently uh, in ClickFunnels, we went and I said, with 55,000 customers, we have a couple million funnels, we have a million plus visitors a day that are coming through our services. We have the ability to see tons of data. And what's yeah. interesting is uh, just in the last year, um, it used to always be the majority of people came from desktop. And they got bigger, bigger, bigger. And right now it's like, I think almost like 58% now, all the traffic in the whole network is all mobile. I think there's 2% that are actual uh, like iPads. Yeah, iPads ain't almost crap. nothing. And then this bad boy. And so what's interesting, this is what gets me excited, is um, right now on desktop, you go there and you wanna buy something, it's like find your wallet and you pull it out and then you're like, I read the numbers and you're tight. And it's this huge process, right? That's what kills most sales. It's like people get sold, they have to like find their wallet and then they're like, oh, I'll come back later and they never do. Okay, um, in ClickFunnels, the technology we're building out is so insane. Like, if your uh, if your phone has um, 
has Apple Pay on it or your phone's an Android Pay or any yes. of that. Um, you come to a page, the order form will disappear and there'll be an Apple Pay button there. Huh. And then you just click on button with your thumb, boom. Buy. Buy. Yeah, it. that's huge. We'll Wallet click, technology. Click, click, click. It's insane. Even like your computer, and if you're using crypto stuff. Crypto and Bitcoin next. You gonna add Bitcoin? Oh yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Every once in a while you get this maniacal <laughs> look to you. I get so excited. I'm not gonna talk about Adolf Hitler around you, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's starting to look. If you start yelling, ah da da da, whatever. What where is Zach? Zach has an impression. Zach! Impression of me? Or no, no, he has an impression. He said, he, he's one of his famous comedians said, I never got why people are like this Hitler guy. He just said, la, 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 la. When you start to do that, you a little bit I surprise like me of this. Yeah, I'll be careful. I mean, uh, remind me of this. So, but what's cool about wallet I think the opportunity is just understand that, like, like all, in fact, I saw my, my, my team this, just this week, it's like, we've always designed websites and funnels for like desktop, it's like two columns typically, right? And it's like, we're gonna shifting everything out to like singular columns because the majority mm -hmm. are coming from there. Like in ClickFunnels, you can design like you just site, you click mobile, and it shrinks down to like your mobile. Yes. We usually start here and we go here, but now we're gonna start defaulting to the mobile. Design there and yeah. then like just look it on desktop because it doesn't really matter, but hopefully it does. Yes. But always like, design for mobile. That's been people. If you're late to that train, you are late to the yeah. game. About three years ago, even I remember like 2009, people. I was at a conference. A guy's like, design for mobile, and I was like. You're weird. <laughs> and now I realize he was a forward thinker and I was the weird one, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, let's take some more questions. Sajid says, yes, it's better to add Bitcoin. Ty, we would love to sponsor you. What is that about? <laughs> Sweet, send the money. Yeah, what is that? I charge $1 million a minute. What is the one and only <laughs> thing you must have in your business model to succeed? The foremost, most important technique in Building the overall business model. Is it marketing? Is it having, you got a good business partner? That I think is super important. In my opinion, business partner is huge. Man, there's so many important things. Good book on that called Working Together by Michael Eisner. You'd be surprised how many, what percentage, large percentage of billionaires had business partners. Whether it's, you know, number one guy for 18 years straight was not right now, but Bill Gates. He, he had Paul Allen and then he had Steve Ballmer. You have, Warren Buffett, who's been number two on and off, he had his Charlie Munger, and you just go through the list. And there's been people who did it without a partner, um, but the majority of people ever. So that, that's my answer. What's your answer? Um, I think I want to double on down on that. I think it's huge. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of businesses prior to ClickFunnels mm -hmm. that marginally did well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until um, we did ClickFunnels, and it was fun because like when we built it, um, Todd, who's my co-founder who built the software. Like he, he was working with me kind of as an employee, not really, but kind of as an employee. And we had that for ClickFunnels. He's like, okay, I want to do this, but I want to be your partner. And at first I had this fear of like, oh, but like, this is my business and my, and all these kind of things. Right. And luckily I'm so grateful that I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I opened it up and what's so cool is that like, he then went and took that and it became his business. So it wasn't like nine to five, it was like, it became his life. Yes. And then after we launched, we started launching ClickFunnels and we started adding people, instead of doing it, Typical people doing like hire a bunch of employees. Um, I think it was because Avengers had just come out and I love that movie. And now we got <laughs> Justice League just did came out. Did you wear pipe tights? <laughs> did you wear <laughs> some <of the> tights? <laughs> I'm a wrestler. Yes, I did. So, no. <laughs> but I, I was like. I'm erasing that image from my brain. <laughs> you in tights. <laughs> oh, man. No, but I was like. I was like, we need to build an Avenger team. Like, we can, and I read an article, I wish I, I, wish I had kept it because it was so cool. But it said that an A player is worth 3,200 times more oh, than a yeah. B player. Yeah. That's Think about a good times. programmer. Yeah, so I was like, let's yeah. just get a whole, let's say get a handful of A players and let's put them together. And like, that's going to be what we do. And so we started finding, I found Dave, I found like uh, John, like in this traffic, we found, Dave. Like, we found these people and we brought them in. And now we have this core nucleus of like this Avengers team. And all of a sudden it's like, boom. Yes. Like your partner, did, uh, he asked yeah. me, he's like, so how many developers work ClickFunnels? And uh, I was like, and I was kind of nervous because he just told me it's the last company had a hundred and something developers. And I was like, we've got 12. He's yeah. like, you, what? So there's only 12 developers in ClickFunnels? I'm like, yeah. He's like, how's that possible? I'm like, we only have A players. Like, yeah. we, like we literally, like, that was the whole model. It's like, get the best in the world, and they can do, you know, like one good person can do the work of 10, 15, 20 other people. And so Heck that's yeah. how we've, More. we've done things. And so With programmers, they yeah. say one good programmer is good 30 to 60. I, I got one of my best programmers. I'm telling you, I can have 10 people working on a project, cannot fix the bug, and he, like uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, he doesn't live in America, he lives in China. And I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna give you 200 bucks if you can fix this in 30 minutes and I'll buy you Kentucky Fried Chicken. 
It will be fixed in 30 minutes. He, he's very no competitive too. So I always like use reverse psychology. I'm like, it, I, his name is when I'm like, when you know, I've had these other guys working on it. <laughs> they, they, just, they just, they just, they just don't have the brain power that you have when do you mind doing this? And he's like, has to live up. He's like, I do have the brain power. So he'll <laughs> fix it. And no, but I'm just saying the magnitude, a good business partner versus an average business partner is like the difference between marrying Angelina Jolie beauty wise <laughs> and marrying who do I say? I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble. For I can't wait to yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's the next one gonna be? I can't wait. <laughs> um, who would be not like Kathy Bates? I knew you were going to say that. Is it that. Kathy Bates? I don't know Is why. that her name? I Sam, knew you, you knew? Say that. <laughs> no offense, Kathy Bates. You are an amazing actor, but the average dude would probably rather be married to an Angelina Jolie type. This is probably, this is some politically correct thing I've done wrong. <laughs> I've done something wrong. I confess I'm not bullying, and it's not because she's overweight. So don't accuse me of. Fat I'm not part of this conversation. I don't yes. know what you're talking about right now. So. Russell told me to say all of this. If you do not agree with what I just said, go to tylopez.com slash clickfunnels. It redirects to his cell phone. And he would like a text and a call every hour on the hour to remind him of how much he's, you're bothered by my statements. Thank you. All right, let's take another question. Someone said, ha, 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 ha. Um, let's see. We have a drink game campaign coming on India Go Go. How about people who want to use Kickstarter India Go Go to raise money? You worked anything and it done click funnels help them at all on that? Because that's um, its own kind of funnel. Yes, I haven't personally done it, but we've I've seen some people do it where uh, they use click funnels not to sell the product but for lead gen ahead of time. Okay. So they try to build up tons of pressure and excitement about their thing. So they thought them to take their India Go Go video or their Kickstarter video. And put it on a click funnels page and just get opt-ins like pre-sell it yes build a huge list build a big following and then when their thing goes live and they have this huge following they can just push it right there and, and get a lot more traction a lot faster so if you can use it to generate free clients free emails versus just paid yeah again this is a those of you coming in late i'm not being paid for a click funnel although i think i'm gonna become an affiliate for it but uh I just, I know, and, and to be honest, there's, you can use Shopify has some similar things, ClickFunnels, each of them have kind of their pros and cons. Some of you are selling on Amazon, making a lot of money. And honestly, let's talk about that for a second. So to be unbiased here, do you think there's a time when it makes sense to maybe be up on ClickFunnels and up on Amazon? Our biggest growth right now on ClickFunnels are Amazon sellers. Okay, for so tell reasons. us how those work, how is that going? <laughs> So a couple of reasons why. One is like some people get spooked because they lose an account or they know someone lost an account and they're like, Amazon shuts me down. Like my business is gone, right? Yes. Um, and so some people come because like I need to control my destiny and have two. Um, and so that's a big reason why a lot of people do um, just be able to have two places so they can sell it. Um, another big thing people do is a lot of times they're using Amazon to generate customers. And uh, for example, we had a buddy who sells the cell phone cords. Does like hundred grand a day in cell phone cord what? things. And in the box that comes with it. Uh, it shows up in, in uh, what their kind mailbox. Cell phone cords. Like the iPhone, iPhone, what are those things called? So people These little don't use the ones they get from Apple? Yeah, those, that's, it's they a huge them. business. It's crazy. 100 grand. Idea for you 100 grand a day. He gets them in China for like a penny and sells them for like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. It's crazy. Ooh. So the thing comes in the mail. Penny? In the box comes in the mail. You open it up, there's your cord, and then there's a big card in the thing that says, hey, if you want a second cord for free, go to whatever.com. Mm -hmm. Goes to that page, the ClickFunnels page, they put in their shipping address, boom, now they got their customer's contact info from Amazon over here, and now they're able to sell them all the other stuff they sell. They sell power banks, they sell all the other, um, that type of products. So do using, because it's only a penny, Yeah. Oh, yeah, send yeah. Them, and what did they get in? They tell them to, you get another cord, if you sign up to the email list or something? Uh, yeah, you basically go to this page, fill out your address, they'll ship you a second cord for free. Let's talk about email for a second. Huge thing. What is ClickFunnels and what do you see the future of email marketing? I think in my business, I probably make, you know, anywhere from 200,000 to a million dollars a month just having a good email list in just one of my businesses. Do you see in the same trend? Email is still important. Yeah. It's not completely I love, replaced. I love email. Um, I don't think it'll ever be completely replaced. What I'm finding fascinating is um, we're doing a blend now of email and also like Facebook Messenger? messengers yes and um, it's it's but like using both of them together has been really powerful it's like you have a message here and then the Facebook thing that, that complements it 
Um, walk us through that for people who don't know. What are you saying? So we all know, we've been to websites, you know, put your email in and you get on some newsletter list. Yeah. What are you doing with bot? When we hear the word bot, we're talking about autobots, we're talking about transformers, <laughs> we, we're talking about auto inserting a message into their Facebook Messenger. Yeah, so the way, so uh, in ClickFunnels, we're, um, we're finishing our platform that'll do bots. And basically, we're call, uh, someone will fill in, like, put in their email address, and there'll be a button underneath that says, Do you also want to send you this info through Messenger, right? So you say yes, boom, and, um, and uh, it, sends you, it sends you the email, and then also sends you the thing that you're opting in for through, uh, through Messenger, right? So it's two different places. Okay. Now it starts them on a sequence. So now I can send them emails um, selling them other products or, you know, trying to, try to strengthen that sell, whatever it might be, right? Do you they, get them to do it at the same time? Um, they opt into both at once? Yes. So they're on from a Facebook ad, mm -hmm. and it says, put your email here, and do you have to do an optional boxing, which can we also... Right now, we do a Facebook's API requires that. Okay. Um, we keep trying to figure out back doors, but that's not long-term for the masses, unfortunately. So, so yeah, people check a box, and they, do most people check both? Uh, it's really high percent, yeah, okay. like, uh, 50 plus. And then you have the permission to send them messages every day, every year, every week? Um, every day if you want, yeah. yeah. Facebook has an algorithm the bots that if people aren't opening your messages, like it'll dramatically limit your ability to send messages, yes. and there's a lot of things like that, which is really smart, actually. So if you spam people, you're gonna get you kicked off. You get fast. the Zuckerberg boot in the butt. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You guys so, like these boots? These are these are nice. Yeah. So it's interesting if you look at. Um, so we have like so over a million person email list, and um, and I think we have like forty thousand people on our messenger list. Okay. And if we broadcast both of them, we get almost the same amount of clicks from really. Each. From just 40,000. Yeah. So if you had a million on the other yes. one, it would be destroying. So email. we're putting a lot of effort and energy into the migration, getting people from here to here, and getting them both places. Because I, I also think it's also scary because it's all on Facebook, all on Messenger. If Zuckerberg one day wakes up and he hates, yeah. decides he hates marketers, it's gone. So I'm not saying get rid of email, but I'm saying use them both together, and like that's, yeah. there, there's power in that. The more platforms you're on, the safer it is. You get kicked off Instagram. If your Twitter's popping, you're good. You know, if you Facebook Messenger, I don't know who the heck checks Facebook mess. I haven't checked my Facebook messages for years, but when I'm like, when I watch other people, people, Hannah, do you check your Facebook messages? No. Ben. Yeah. Sam. Sure. Pablo Escobar does. Every day. Okay. We say we call Sam Pablo. <laughs> okay. Let's get more questions. You still good? Oh yeah. You're yeah. not falling asleep on me? Okay. A little bit, but. Somebody, so he's so excited to be talking to you guys. Uh, let's see, a lot of questions. Russell, you're the man. Please give some fresh tips to catch. Oh, that went fast. Man, <laughs> these things starting to pour. In. To catch it as a ClickFunnels affiliate. Oh, uh, cool. Let's talk about affiliate marketing in general. What do you see are affiliates using ClickFunnels to test yeah. things, get them up? Yes, we, we actually, so we have an affiliate program. We give away cars. Do you want a car from us yet? Yes, he has. Oh, how many cars have we given? I want a car? You have You just haven't collected on it's it. Cool. Hey! How many, how many cars have we given? Where's my car? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car did I win? 51? So we can wait 51. I won 51 cars. You heard it? <laughs> it's locked in. You're a man of your word. <laughs> no, just stop. stop or did, did, you mean a, did you mean a, night, a 1951 car? <laughs> yeah, you probably got closer to that. Yeah. Have a old Chevy, man. <laughs> Catalytic converter, you will just. It gets one mile to the go. Okay, I'm gonna teach you guys how to become the biggest Ty Lopez affiliate in the world. You but before we do that, can we actually talk about this car for a second? Did I actually <laughs> win a car? Yeah, yeah. What kind of car is it? You can pick your car. We just cover. But what are the stuff. what are the options? We've got people all the way. It's funny. We've got people that bought like I don't even know some of the crazy high end yeah. ones all the way down to moms who've gotten minivans. So it's like. So I might I might give it away as a bonus for somebody in my company. My brother Ben. My brother Ben. <laughs> was like, "Yes, I'm in." I gotta Snapchat this. How could I have won a car and not know it? This is disturbing. Are you telling me I won a car as an affiliate? For I didn't, how do you not and know? And I this? didn't know this. What should I do with the car? Should I give it to a fan or should I give it to an employee? Hannah is an employee, <laughs> and she's saying to employee, "Do the Hannah dance." What was the dance you were just doing, Hannah? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Hannah has a weird head swag. Okay. <laughs> Here, can head you swag. can you um, caption my snap for this? Okay. <laughs> so I got any car. What should I get? Let's do a quick survey. What do I get? Somebody said employee, fan. What car should I get if you were me? I can get any car within reason. Tesla Roadster. 
You must be my brother on here. Audi R8, Bugatti, Bugatti. You're probably not going to get me a Bugatti. Although I will be your best affiliate. If you send me a Bugatti. You could make, we can make that happen. We can What's the it. most money you've have you seen affiliates making seven figures, six figures? Oh yeah. So theoretically, it, just think. Click for like people promote our stuff. Yes, but if this is a whole ton. So let's talk about this because I interrupted you. Okay. What, what, what can an affiliate either to be an affiliate to ClickFunnels or to any product? How are they? What, Let's do for him. How many guys want to be an affiliate and make Ty Lopez more money and make you guys money in the interim? Do you guys have an affiliate program hey, for like MentorBot? I say I will. Oh no, that was on my Pee Wee Herman okay. adventure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Does MentorBox have an affiliate program? MentorBox does, and so does TyLopez.com. Okay, so this is what I would do. This comes back to talk about earlier. So I would go to YouTube and I would find all the coolest Ty Lopez videos you can find. Okay. There's a bunch of them, right? Find the ones that meant the most to you and probably like theme them out. So like here's all Ty's thoughts on cryptocurrency or all Ty's thoughts on whatever. Find the videos and then make a page that says, um, I'm going to give you the top 10 Ty Lopez videos about cryptocurrencies. Put your email address in here and I will email you the top 10 videos I found. They're amazing. You're going to learn about this, this, all that stuff, right? And that's step one. Step number two then. So you get their email address. I go to Facebook, yeah, and I target Ty's audiences and my audience and entrepreneur audiences and Mark Cuban's audiences and and Tony Robbins' audience, and I say, come to, Ty, come to this page, I'm gonna give you Ty Lopez's 10 best videos on this topic, and you spend a little bit of money, people come, they opt in, they, you start building an email list, and then after someone comes in, you email them, here's the 10 links to the 10 videos, and then by the way, do you know that Ty every single month curates, him and his partner curate uh, the best books they find in this really cool thing called Mentor Box, if you click on this link, you can get an account to, to Mentor Box, now you can get these videos, now you're gonna get all their books, their best books every single month, blah, 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 hmm. blah. And now they're affiliates for you, and they've got a really unique offer they can go out there. The reason why affiliates lose yeah. is because they'll go and they'll sign for your affiliate program, they'll get their affiliate link for MentorBox, and they'll send the same link that everybody else on our sending. Same ones you're promoting, some everyone's promoting, and they don't they can't be profitable because there's nothing unique about what they're doing. Yeah, you gotta make some content. So you take and what's nice about it, same thing I tell my people, I'm like, go to my channels. I have so much stuff I put out every single day. Find the stuff you like the most, package it, give it away in an opt-in, and then you can build a list and then sell my stuff. We yeah. So for, let's talk about this for a second, content. A lot of people are scared of creating a video. They don't want to put their face on there. They don't want a podcast. They, what do you have to say to people with that belief? Because it's holding you back. We live in the content consumer marketplace. You, most, even Steve Jobs started doing this, 1984. He went on stage and created this content with this cool thing, which really was really when Apple was like, became cool, you know, one of the things. So, what do you say to somebody who has a false belief that they can't create something, some cool videos because they're introverted or they're nervous or what do you say? Um, probably two things. Then you can go to both directions. One is like, um, even if you're introverted, you can do it. Like, I'm actually super introverted. If you ask my friends at home, they, every time they see a Facebook Live, they're like, you talk a lot on the camera. You don't talk in real life. Like, I'm super introverted. Like, you can still do it. That's number one. Like, don't be afraid. The second thing is though, like, Maybe you really are in a super huge, super huge fear. Like, I look at my company. Like, I got some amazing people who work with me, partners and founders and stuff. And like, they're not on video all the time, but I am. So it's like, if you can't be that person, like, find find the partner who's like, they want to do that thing. They want to be the person in there, and and make that the partnership, and that can work as well. Yeah. You know, Todd Dickerson would have the the coded ClickFunnels. Like, he he wouldn't have ever wanted to be on camera talking about ClickFunnels all day. Yeah. And that's like, I can't code, but I can do that. So we found each other and you know made it work. If you study Myers-Briggs personality theory, one of the Jungian, you know, psychology tests, it says in almost all most cases introverts and extroverts are the best match. So if you're looking for a business partnership, if you can partner up, if you look at Warren Buffett is extroverted. He likes to crack jokes. If you go to the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, he's funny. And then Charlie Munger, he'll turn to Charlie Munger who's an introvert and be like, "Charlie, what's your opinion?" And he'll go, "I have nothing to add." Literally, that's what he says. There's 18,000 people flew in from around the world as they ask in advance, you know, what's the next company you're investing in? How are you going to invest our billions of dollars? Warren Buffett will be like, well, when the tide comes in, you see who's swimming naked. Ha ha, the whole place laughs. Then literally, he'll be like, Charlie, what's your opinion? He'll go, he literally eats peanut brittle <laughs> and drinks Coke because he owns C's Candy Peanut Brittle and Co they, the largest shareholder, I think, at Coca-Cola. So, and he's mic'd up to 18,000 people in a studio and he's such an introvert. He eats, he has like, introverts are more likely to have very strict 
uh, little habits. So he has a habit where he eats peanut brittle at 92. So you're listening. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> for 18,000 people. I'm like this dot. This guy gives doesn't give a damn. So, but they're a great business partnership yeah. because Charlie Munger sits there and crunches the numbers, and he reigns in the oh the optimism of an of an extrovert. So, your business partner is an introvert. Mm -hmm. My business partner Alex is visiting. And guess where he has been all day? Locked in a guest room in my house. He's like, I'm working on something. Don't bother me with humans. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good partnership. Yeah. Okay, what other questions? These are, these are pouring in. Somebody said they'll offer me 44 grand for the painting. No, I'm waiting for that thing to go up more. Which painting? The Brazilian one? Or the, that's one from Casey Bow in, in, from Brooklyn. Ty, oh man, I came through too fast. He did a trend one. Where's the couch? You mean the couch that I had when I was uh, broke in a mobile home? <laughs> that thing probably fumigated and burned. <laughs> do you wear, <coughs> do you ever wear your makeup on camera? You yes, know that Russell, that. Ru I think I'm talking to you. Russell was one of the top wrestlers. You were number two in the US? At high school, yep. Like and he's like country. about, he's a purple belt maybe in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So he can come kick your ass if you say he's got makeup on. Let's go. He can show you makeup ground into the you ground. Got the ears to prove it. That's yeah, he's got the cauliflower. Always check, you know, one of my. Um, <laughs> Before you get in a fight, check their ears. I had, I, when I first started in <laughs> martial arts, I had this Navy SEAL sniper guy taught a class in North Carolina. You remember him? Brad Huffman, Sifu oh, yeah, Huffman. Yeah, yeah, he was the yeah, only yeah. white guy to ever grow up in the Shaolin Temple in China where they invented like Kung Fu and all that, but he was also fought in the UFC one. And he told me, Ty, before you get in a fight with a man, you look at his nose, you look at his ears. If the nose has been broken in multiple places, the ears are all fucked up, leave the dude alone. You're not gonna do well. He, I, I gotta tell him the whole story. This guy was, he was huge, he was very strong. I'm sure he killed many people uh, as, a, as a Navy, he was a sniper, right? So. Hey, can you uh, watch the front gate, Hannah? Um, so, this is a true story. You appreciate this as a wrestler. He was dating a girl. He was in a biker, or like a bar. And all the, these Hells Angel guys came in. And they started picking a fight with the bouncers. And they were just like causing disorder, you know? So he went, oh no, I don't want to get involved in this. So he went to the back of the restaurant. And he said they were picking fights with everybody. And slowly but surely... One of the big Harley's Angels guy made his way all and kind of pinned Brad in the back. And Brad said, look, dude, I don't want to have to hit you. Back off. And the guy was drunk and kept coming. And he said, um, I hit him in the chest as hard as I could. Okay. And um, there's this thing in Kung Fu. It's called iron palms. It's, the, it's basically a very fucked up strong hands. Okay. And he was like nine iron palms or something. He hit this guy in the chest and he said the dude fell over. And blood came out of his mouth, and he's like, I killed him. A dude just, boom, never got, he fell on the table. So the guy went to the hospital, the ambulance came. And he said, I felt so bad, I went to the hospital, and I visited the guy. And the police, and it was self-defense, so he didn't get in trouble. The doctor said, did you stomp on this guy? And he goes, why? He goes, this guy's so messed up inside that you, it, I thought you were on top of him stomping. He's like, no, I hit him one time in the chest. And he goes, well, one good thing, you hit him so hard, you burst, he was about to have, the guy would have had a stroke or something. You <laughs> burst a vein in his head, but luckily we caught it and they became best friends later. <laughs> Literally. But the moral of the story is, if a 260 pound guy says, don't pin me in the corner, and his ears are, his ears were destroyed, his nose was messed up, and he says, I'm a former Navy SEAL, you are about to visit the hospital, my friend. So whoever said he has makeup on, I challenge you to say that. Go to a ClickFunnels event. When's the next ClickFunnels live event? March. FunnelHackingLive.com. The next. What event. is it called? Go. Funnel hacking live. Funnel hacking. All right, we're gonna wrap up here in a little bit, but we're having fun here. Okay. Ty asked Russell to give a quick breakdown of how to get started with ClickFunnels. Hey, let's let's um let's do something real quick. So by the way, for those of you. Um, who are in one, my new program, make, How to Make Money Online. What's the link to that? I'll, I'll announce that. Mm. Russell just 
recorded some beginner and advanced stuff on how to get up, what, 10 minutes? Yep. 10 minutes you can be up with a website. So that's probably the best place because he needs to write the whole stuff down. Let's talk about copywriting, somebody's asking. How can people make their website the words matter? Like it needs to say something awesome. Yeah, um, you know, it's funny, we actually have a, um, I have a partner, uh, another part we found. She can come in here from the kitchen. Um, it's funny, like, we created a software that helps with that because the copywriting is the hardest part. A lot of times you build a page and it may look really pretty, really look nice, but if people come and like the words aren't right, yes. like no one's gonna buy it. Like that's what it all comes down to. Like the funnel doesn't matter without the right words, the copy um, that converts people to buying it. So um, I have a partner named Jim Edwards. He went through um, like all marketing advertising for the last 100 plus years and he found like all the best converting headlines from all the way back from like the beginning of copyright, like Gene Schwartz and uh, Gary Halbert, all these people and combined all these things put in software, basically you could type in your product name, it's like, I sell this, uh, this is what the benefit, this is the feature, so you talk about it, you fill in some blanks, you click a button and it pops out like 800 headlines, based really? on the best headline templates in the world. And you just copy Where do you get this? them all. It's called Funnel Scripts. Funnelscripts.com, get okay. yeah. it? Yep. And you, you, you use that, Ben? No, I've seen it. It's cool, it's like, it's like headlines, and it's like, same thing if it's like, I need to send an email out. And it's like, hey, ask some questions about your product or service, boom, pops out. Here's 13 email sequences you can send out to your people. Or you're like, hey, and I need Facebook. It's free or it costs uh, money? It's a, it's a, it's a cost money, yeah. 6,000 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so the Facebook ads, you're like, hey, what's your product? You fill out, you whack the, you fill out the forms, fill, click the buttons, pops it out. It's like, hey, here's like 2,300 Facebook ads you can use. They're the best what? proven copy. So use copy, paste, copy, paste. And so for most people, like that's where they start. In fact, it's funny. Um, I have a bunch of friends who are high paid copywriters who charge anywhere from fifteen dollars to $25,000 a letter. Mm -hmm. And um, they used to go and they'd give a client a huge client questionnaire, they fill the whole thing and they go and spend the next like six weeks writing copy. Now what they do is they take the client uh, questionnaire, they fill it in the funnel scripts, they click the button and it pops out the copy and then they tweak it a little bit and they send it to the client, charge the same fees. Like it's, it's yeah, If you don't know amazing. how to write, you ain't, it, here's the thing, it's a catch 22. If you don't know how to write, most people don't know how to write. You're not gonna make a lot of money. One of the best things they should have taught us in school is copyright, how to be persuasive. You, I go to some websites, I call it de-optimization. <laughs> they literally have created a website that makes you less likely to buy than if they had nothing on it. It's kind of like men on dates. <laughs> some dudes, the best advice for most of us guys is don't talk. You're way better. You're way more likely to have the girl be like, Wow, this dude's kind of mysterious. I kind of, I kind of like this guy. When, when men, I, I kid you not, I was at Angus Barn in Raleigh, North Carolina, years ago. This guy's sitting behind me, obviously on a first date. I'm eating a steak, and I'm like, I gotta listen in. Yeah, I couldn't help but eavesdrop. Kid you not, he was bragging to this girl. This is his exact words. You ever used a fax machine? And the girl goes, Oh, yeah, like I think at work he goes. I invented a lot of the most important parts of a fax. And he went on to talk for like 30 minutes on the technical, and this girl was just fading. She was sending SOSs through the waiter, send help, please. And this guy was just talking. So a lot of people's website is like that. You go to their website and you're like, it's confusing. Can't find the buy button. Mm -hmm. I go to restaurants website. Restra There's only one reason you go to a restaurants website. But two, the phone number and the hours and address, three things. So what do most restaurant websites do? 17 clicks later, you find the address, the hour, and the phone number. If you have a restaurant website, good copywriting is also not just fancy words, but putting the right thing in the right place. Structure, yeah. So put the freaking thing at the top. I put on mytelevis.com, I got the phone number on the top. So what's some copywriting simple thing? There's my simple thing. A lot of you guys need to fix your website. If you're a physical location, put the hours, put the buy button high. You know, some, I remember one time I couldn't buy something. It was a website. I wanted to buy something. I searched. I actually sent it to my assistant. Can you find how to buy? I honestly think I they forgot. to give you money. No, I think they forgot to put the buy button up. They were, it was like long and they had written in. They forgot to buy. So what's your, my, my technique is keep it simple, stupid. Find out what people want on your website. Hit them with power words. The most powerful word in the English language, they say, according to Frank uh, Luntz, he's a famous political co uh, consultant. He says the word imagine is a power word. Imagine if you lost 50 pounds in the next 50 days. 
imagined, you know, people like to, especially in America. So that's my quick hack. What's a hack for you to be simple right. things besides using this website? Uh, my favorite headline in the world that works for almost everything is how to blank without blank. So it's how to, and then you insert like the thing they desire the most yes. without the thing that causes them the most pain. So for example, like to be like, how to read all these books without actually ever reading a book. And then yep. I like, give you money because I want to watch the videos and get the whole download, right? Yep. Because like every every market, so I always start with that. It's like, okay, what do people actually want? Like, so how to and insert what they desire the most without the thing that they're most scared of. And almost every product service fits into that little formula, and it gives you. We've got a guest text. here. You're selling fitness stuff, right? Yes. So she's got a big fitness Instagram. What what's your main product you're selling? Um, right now I'm actually doing, which is interesting, waist trainer. But I'm doing waist trainers, right? But I'm actually incorporating where because I'm, I'm heavy on weight lifting, right? Like actually getting a real result. So what I'm doing is incorporating a system at the back where it's going to actually support your squat as you come up for women. So she's got a squat. For those of you who can't hear, a squat well, system. A squat system or a support system is basically supporting the back. So when you're squatting, a lot of people tend to lean. We forward. need to give her a mic. Um, Let me repeat it. A squatting system, so you lean forward, you don't hurt your back, posture, so you get strong, posture, you get the right, form. right posture. So she would say, using your technique would be something like, for girl, let's say your art target, or her art target is women, how to get a Brazilian butt without going to the gym. Or without something. hurting your back doing squats. Yeah, without hurting your without, back. Without, yeah. How to gain muscle while you lay in bed. This will sell, unfortunately. Yeah. How to lose tons of weight while eating donuts and ice cream in your day. Dude, that, those headlines, I see those. Really good. <laughs> there was a guy who got sued by Mark Cuban. I know Mark Cuban, and, and he got Mark Cuban sued him because it was a pill, and it was like, how Mark Cuban got smart without studying. Take this pill. It was a scam, but people <laughs> bought that thing because exactly, so I love that. How Write that down if you're taking notes. How to blankety blank, good thing, insert good thing, Without, insert bad thing. And if you understand the 25 cognitive biases of psychology, the two most powerful drivers of human behavior are very simple. Reward and avoidance of pain. So if you basically go, how to make a million dollars while you sleep, people will be like, you know, good thing, no pain, yay. And it's a double cognitive bias. They call that Lollapalooza. What's another example? What are some of your businesses? Let's do a few of these practical tips right here. What's a business that you guys have? <clears throat> Let's see. Sanita, don't know what that is. <laughs> Someone says, Russell, you have now legit selling Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> How, How to coffee business. wear a Hawaiian shirt without looking like a douchebag. I should stop there. <laughs> In case you really are selling Hawaiian shirts, which maybe you are. How to wear a Hawaiian shirt without looking like you're 200 years old. <laughs> without looking like your grandpa. What else? Soda company. Vape. How about vaping? I'm Mormon. I don't know much about that. You don't know about vaping. Vaping is like <laughs> basically how to smoke without the negative, you know, tobacco problems. What else we got? How to twerk, someone says. Are you big on understanding twerking? <laughs> selling, let's say... Russell is selling twerking Who are we talking lessons. To this, time of night? this is what happened when I live stream late at night. We got crazy dude in wherever. Okay, twerking secrets. Like Zumba. You know the Zumba brand is like this huge billion dollar brand, and I could have been the one of the first investors. I I didn't. I missed it. But he basically teaches you to salsa dance to lose weight. But let's do the twerking one. What would be an example of twerking one? So why do people twerk? What's the twerking? Because Hannah, why do people twerk? You're our resident dance expert. Why do women twerk and some men, unfortunately? Wait, men twerk? No, yeah. I'm I sure know that you twerk. twerk right now. Ty's confessing, I think. I, women, I do not twerk. <laughs> I do not twerk. Let's say, how to twerk without work. That actually rhymes as well. So that, like it sounds even stupider. <laughs> well, let's say, so twerking women do to be sexy and why do you not? How about how to twerk how to, without looking like a slut? Oh, that's actually really good. Because a lot boom. of women drop like the, the idea. Boom. Thank you. Boom. All right. Mike, I can drop. Stem cell research. Uh, that one. Let's see. Somebody said, come on. What do we got? We got crazy ones here. Someone throw something hard. 
Somebody throw, we're going to do this to close up. We're going to do an actual case study of how Russell... How to sell weed without going to jail. <laughs> how to sell weed See, without going to jail. Be. Sell actual weeds. <laughs> you to go in your garden, <laughs> That's big pull up weeds, put it in a bag. You may get killed by the Mexican cartel for selling fake or some tweaker. But okay, let's do a actual. I'm gonna pick one of you. What's your actual business that you're trying to get off the ground? And let's talk. Let's talk about this apparel store. Be very specific. Things like apparel store is a little bit too broad for us to give good advice. Fashion store is too broad. Be very specific. Elder care, coffee store. Mm, that one's not bad. Landscaping business, <clears throat> delivery. How to throw conferences. How to have a social media marketing agency. Let's do that because I have a lot of cut of my. I, I have a course where I've taught <laughs> over 20,000 people how to build a social media marketing agency. Okay. So, so they're offering social media to to end clients. To businesses. They go around to businesses, they charge one to $10,000 a month. And we're gonna actually put this, remind me, Adrian, we'll cut yeah. this video right here. And we'll keep this in, but we'll also put this in the social media marketing course. Cool. So, how do they get customers using your techniques? So if I was going to a business owner, yep. and I like, what do they desire most? They want customers coming in their place, right? So how to get, um, how to Doctor, get- Let's say doctors and dentists. They're okay. gonna specialize. Or in restaurants. Okay. Um, so, let's, okay, let's use dentists then. So how to get, how to get cash paying clients to come into your clinic? They call it clinics the yeah, dentist, dentist office. Dentist office. Without having to, uh, or how to get how to get, um, yeah, how to get cash, whatever, whatever the, the, their thing is, right? The, the pay, it's pay, the paying clients, clients. and then well, I, think, I don't think most dentists want to sit there on social media, so without spending time on Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat. Okay. Because they want to fix people's teeth. They don't want to be. Doing yes. these things, right? Yes. So you become social media. So how to um, fill your restaurant with uh, uh, with people ready to, to buy your food on Tuesday night when everyone else normally can't come in, without having to. Once again, <laughs> I think social media people. It's like I don't think the business wanted social media. Yeah, without, without having to manage your Facebook ads. Without even yeah, without even knowing what a Twitter account is. Without even knowing uh, how to tweet or how to yeah yeah how to snap. Okay, so. If you have a social media marketing agency, you make a ClickFunnel landing page. The landing page at the top says how to get, so if it's a dentist, how to get 17 new dental clients this year from social media, and then you put yeah. without having to ever log into Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. That's a great headline, actually. You like right that? Right there. Take that. You should use that. If you don't use it, then you hate money. That's the only reason. You hate money. That. I got to use I that line on reason. people. Yeah. Sir, you hate money. It's the only logical explanation is you must hate money. Otherwise, you just do it. Okay, so they build it on ClickFunnels. They get the headlines up. How would you get Dennis to start going to see this page? Um, I would go to Facebook and target dentists. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. That'd be the first spot. Uh, next thing, uh, I know a little about the dental market. If I was going after dentists, I'd go to dentaltown.com. Dentaltown.com has an email list of like 80,000 dentists. You can rent wow. for like five grand. Really? Buy an ad, I'd pound huh. it out and I'd have a whole bunch of clients overnight. So you can basically rent email lists. They call it email drops. You can do an email drop to 80,000 dentists and you have them click. Most, most industries have those kind of things. I just have to know dentaltown.com does it for dentists, but most of them have those type of things where people have aggregated the industry and yes. you can rent ads to go out in their email box. Yeah. So there you go. We built a business from start to finish. We've been on here an hour and a half. Russell, we got to give this away. We got to give money and an iPad. I mean, all right, here's my headline. This is real money too, you guys. Keep sure you're thinking no, about it's not. It's I don't fake. want people this to know. Real. No, this is fake actually. Oh, it says fake. motion picture. <laughs> you know why I do money. that? Because there was a rapper this year. Which rapper was it that had somebody come in with guns, take all serious? their money? Yeah. This is totally fake, guys. Just so you know, don't you come here. This I is don't fake. keep a lot of cash, but I do keep a Glock, an AR. <laughs> I got, I got a, a AK-47 in here. That's actually true, by the way. So if you come looking for the fake money, you may meet a real bully. So cool. You may real. Fake money, real bullets. That's my ticket. How about that headline? How to protect your, your house, how to protect your family from intruders from bed. From your bed, without getting out of bed. True story, a man broke into a house in America um, about 10 years ago. 
an old lady lived in the house. She heard him come in. She pulled out. She had a big gun. I don't know what it was, a 350 set, something. It wasn't her gun, but it was next to her bed. She pulled it out. The room was all dark. The robber walks in, opens her bedroom door. She was waiting for him, gun trained. She knew where the door kind of was. He opened, it's a true story, opened the door. She went, boom, shot. Dude fell down dead, okay? She calls 911, I just killed somebody. They came, ambulance get here. Um, the dude had died of a heart attack from being scared. He thought the house was empty. She missed him. She shot way over his head, and he just thought he was in his house all alone. He was an older robber, apparently, not with a great heart, a little too much bacon. And the sound, because I will tell you, if you're sneaking in somebody's house and you think no one's there, you know you're doing something wrong. If a 357 goes off and you got a faulty heart, this guy's visiting, he's in the underworld right now. So, moral of the story is that is a real headline you can use. How to protect your home. That you could sell 357s. <laughs> and you have a little antidote with this woman. Hey, I would buy a 357 out. How to kill somebody without actually shooting them. Just shoot the gun off in a dark room. They're dead. Hey, the greatest sound with a weapon. It, it, you, you, I have shotguns. Where stories come from? This is amazing. I read a lot. We 12 gauge shotgun. Just click it. They're out of your house, man. They're out. Most people know that sound. That's a universal sound of get the fuck out of here. Now. Okay. You like this story? I love it. It's a little weird. It's late night, but this is the late night. We should make, I, I really need a late night show. I talk so much better late at night. What is wrong with me, Ben? If you don't believe there's such a thing as a night owl. Oh, these guys are like, can we go to bed, please? What time is it? No, I've turned every one of my company into night owls. Adrian's like, I, I go to bed at three in the morning normally now. Okay. Uh, here we go. We got... You're going to get a fake stack of $10,000 worth approximately 50 cents or, or an iPhone. Dude, we should start doing that. This is the dump. This is, you know how they used to like, if you pick the wrong door, you get a goat. You get the bad You get a goat or you get the real iPad. This is an iPad mini for 100. Now, I'll give you guys 100 bucks. Okay. I'm going to pick a question for those of you who've been listening. We had a lot of people on here for late at night. That was really, that's amazing. We pro I bet you Facebook gonna be about 60,000 people watch. We probably, this will be 50 to 100,000 people watching. Bigger than a stadium, man. And with the replays, we'll hit a lot. Okay, here's my question. First person to answer it gets second prize. Second person, it's kind of counterintuitive. Second person gets first prize. The question is, what is the product that Russell Brunson client on ClickFunnels used to make $20 million in two months. Okay, tell me when, wait, wait, we're gonna do, we do a little thing, we gotta pick the phone first. This is for the 100 bucks. All right, you're the guest, tell me when to stop. Stop. No, you're not the guest, it's a woman. Oh, sorry. We're going back to you wearing makeup, Russell. Again. Okay, this is Twitter. Twitter, somebody's gonna win the 100 bucks. Tell me when to stop. Ready? Yep. And stop. Stop. The winner is right there, Sandesh. Sandesh something. You want a flashlight, I mean, you want a hundred bucks. <laughs> okay, tell me on these three, tell me when to stop. Okay, ready? Yep. And stop. All right, we've got to go to, I don't know, my finger's right between, go again. I don't know why I'm making that sound, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it adds to the effect uh, though. Stop. All right, we are back to Insta iPad mini four first part tell me when to stop ready stop okay first one I see nobody somebody wrote the word insta somebody said I'm here somebody said Android all right Instagram has some horrible guesses what's the first product what the question again? there we go nandaja.m you got not an iPad no. I mean not a flashlight an iPad mini four you can use it as a flashlight though that's right you so. can use it as a big ass flashlight <laughs> Buy his book, Expert Secrets. Go to tylopez.com slash clickfunnels. That's my affiliate link for click uh, for click funnels. You can buy it, it's the same price. Or he's he decided to give all my clients 99% off if you go to no, he didn't. <laughs> no false claims. But um, yeah, go to tylopez.com slash clickfunnels. You can get your website, your idea up tested in the next 10 minutes to 10 hours, depending on how slow bus you are. <laughs> Your slow bus might take 10 hours. 
Last parting words. Okay, here's my last question for you. You got five kids. How many sons? How many uh, daughters? Three sons. Three sons, two daughters. Okay. The question is, if today was your last day on Earth because you were getting on Blue Origin and heading to Mars, so you would never see Earth or your kids and family, what are your parting words to them? It doesn't have to be about money. It doesn't have to be about business. Oh, man. You got a paragraph. The, the rocket is getting ready to take off. <laughs> what do you yell out the door for them to remember you by? Oh, wow. We're going deep late at night. Um, it's not going to be about you wearing makeup or not, right? It's not about makeup. That's not, <laughs> it's not about business either. It's going to be... That could be anything. It could be... I know you're religious. <coughs> it can be religious. What is it? Man. Some things more important than money. I think it all comes down to is just helping them. I try to figure out... Like, <laughs> I want them to understand who they are. You know what I mean? Like, Take your time. I'm a night owl. We got all night to wait for a good <laughs> answer. Um, wow. Like, I think, like, just some context. Like, I, like when I was growing up, when I was a kid, I never thought I was important or valuable or anything, you know? Like, I was never succeeded in school or things like that. I always struggled. And just because of, you know, business stuff, I've been able to have an impact on a lot of people. I think, hope them understand that, that, they're not just a person, like they can have a huge impact on so many people if they'll just like follow their dreams and run with it and like just do it. You know what I mean? Something like that. I don't know how to write so not underestimate themselves, maybe. Yeah, and so I'm like Do you do you think you underestimated yourself growing up? hundred percent. I always thought I was a dumb kid. My whole life I was dumb. You never thought you'd be making a hundred million bucks a year? Never. If you ask my teachers, they wouldn't believe that either. But I was never my thing. Wait, wait, did the teachers kind of go, you ain't never doing anything? So when I was going, so I got a wrestling, I, I wanted to go wrestle at uh, Brigham Young University. Yeah. And I had to apply, and my guidance counselor's like, you're too, he literally told me, he's like, you're too dumb to get into BYU. And I was like, but I, I He wanna, said those words? Yeah. And he was, was a guidance counselor yeah. or misguided? It's crazy, like, we had 900 people in my graduating class, and they, they had the number, and I was number, like, 200, like, I, there's... 150, 180 people dumber than me, and the rest were smarter. Yeah. Like, I got a thing, and he's just like, you can do, you, you, you shouldn't go there. And I got him because athletics, I did good. Anyway, it's funny because after I wrote my first book, um, and made my first million or so, uh, my mom took the book, and she was taught at school, and she went to him and said, this is my son that you said was too dumb, he's a millionaire now, and this is his book that you should read. And she it was said, like, suck it. <laughs> oh, shit. So that was, that was a good day in my life, in my mom's life. So that was, that was cool, but, yeah, I never, I never believed in that. And it wasn't until later when like, I started getting into the business stuff. Yeah. And I didn't get into business to be in the business. I started learning stuff and I got so excited. I would share with people and then they would do stuff and I would do stuff. And, like, and the more like, I learned, the more I want to share. And, and like, it, like, it was the first time I would, I would read something and learn it and then like, I'd make money. Or I, like, the business was the vehicle for me where I was like, I learned something. And all of a sudden, you know, it is like all of a sudden reading becomes live because like, I can read something, I can learn, I can do it, and something changes and becomes better because of it yeah and I became obsessed with that and then that was so fun for me and I wish that I would have understood that when I was their age so I, I think that's what I would tell my kids is just understand who they are and like what they're capable of and that they are good yeah. enough now you know what I mean don't ever be the person that says somebody's idea is gonna fail or they're gonna fail I'm telling you they'll be writing books about you when they're millionaires and billionaires, they'll be on my live stream saying your name. <laughs> Michael, you his name, his address, his phone number. Michael his Jordan did his Hall of Fame, the greatest basketball player of all time. And he goes, this is for the damn guy who cut me from the team in whatever, 11th grade. I'm, damn, I'm Michael Jordan. I am the greatest of all time. You suck. His address, he lives in Gastonia, North Carolina. Go destroy, burn his house. And now he didn't say that, but it, no, it was a controversial thing because. But the point is, people create tremendous pain and trauma in young people. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Kids are like Play-Doh, man. You you deform the Play-Doh. Eventually, it hardens up, and that's what you have. And we live in a world. I sometimes wonder. I'm like, what kind of guidance teacher literally says the words, "You're too dumb." I mean. It causes irreparable damage to a lot of people. You're lucky enough to have recovered from it, but trust me, okay. we live in a world, I, I have a company doing a lot of psychology tests with a really accurate test. Um, and dude, you cannot, the biggest worldview kind of malformation that people have comes from some form of bullying. Mm -hmm. 
And it could be a teacher, authority figure saying you're stupid. It can be any kind of trauma like that. So lay low on that. I tell you, if someone comes to you with a business idea, we were just talking about this <laughs> yeah, at dinner. One of my business partners told somebody, don't invest in this company. It ain't going nowhere in 2008. A guy was going to put a million in. He would have owned uh, one million at a four million valuation. He would have roughly had 25% of the company. The company is worth 10 years later, eight mil. The bill. Eight bill. So the he bill. would have had roughly the small sum of $2,000 million. So my friend's no longer invited to his Christmas parties. He's no longer invited. His name is Alex. You guys know him. He, he has changed the name of all his children and grandchildren, so he never has to remember this dude. He's like, when somebody hears the word Al Alex, it spits on the ground. So don't be the dude that says, your ideas. And another guy, he was, my friend was telling me, okay, Evan Spiegel came to somebody's school and said, yo, I got this disappearing app idea. I'm going to call it Snapchat. I need 50 grand. And one of the wise professors there took the, not only did he not invest, but he took him aside and said, listen to me, son, I'm going to guide you in the wise path. Instead of starting Snapchat, I don't know what business he told him, but as you know, the youngest billionaire in history, self-made, was Evan Spiegel. So don't listen to most people. I will tell you this just to close out. There is a time when people are going to give you negative advice that's right. So don't all, because people don't agree with you, don't always go, well, I'm Evan Spiegel and people are telling me no. It depends. I, this is how I look at it. If a qualified person who has your interests at heart, that's the two components. Because you can have a qualified person who doesn't like you, so they're, they're mm -hmm. you know, biased against you. But if a qualified person, like if a brain surgeon who is your uncle or boyfriend or husband says, hey, don't hit your head against that wall. It'll cause long-term brain damage. Listen to them. <laughs> but if they don't know what they're talking about or they don't really care about you and they care about themselves, you got to just ignore it. So you got to surround yourself with qualified people who really have your best interests at heart. People are non-exploitative. We live in a world of math where there's two trait, three traits, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psych psychotic behavior, which are highly exploitative. Get those people out of your life. This teacher that you had was probably Machiavellian. was probably somebody who was made fun of when he was young. So here he's a guidance teacher. You're stupid. Da, 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 da. You should send him a, your, a screenshot of your bank account <laughs> and say, you know what I decided to do? I've mailed this letter to all my former <coughs> guidance counselors. I'm going to give 10% of my bank account split evenly among all of those people who said I could do it. So just check the box here and return the, this letter to me. Did you back me up or did you criticize me? And then send it and make him, ha he'll have to, and say, if you check the box and admit you criticized me, I will send you $10,000. Just to see if they do, and you have to sign your name, put a little mug shot where you're looking all depressed. Get the guy, get a little vengeance. If I get that, we can come back here and like broadcast the yes. live world. All right. Yes, for 10 grand, <laughs> that guy might, be, no, anyway, vengeance isn't good. Okay, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. This was awesome, my man. Thanks for having me, man. For those of you listening, tylopez.com slash click funnels. And uh, yeah, we're out. Awesome. Thanks, Peace. everybody. This yeah, is the fun. part. Yeah, now you can get the outtake before we fall in the pond. <laughs> oh. all, yeah. <laughs> you should, just do, just a fake out. Like, you should do a fake outtake, man. <laughs> oh, 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 be like Michael Scott in the office, fall in the pond. <laughs> I relate all things to the office, just in case you guys didn't know. You got me, Reese. I watched the office forever.